Hi, this is a basic set introduction, first part, part of the chem Potential Chemistry course at the Department of Chemistry, Copenhagen University. If one wants to compute the energy of a molecule, of an atom, needs to define a mathematical functions for some orbitals. We have the analytical solution to the Schrodinger equation only for the hydrogen atom and the H2 plus molecule. Possibly, the hydrogen orbitals could be used also for other atoms. But what about molecules? How can we describe the orbital of molecules? Possibly, the representation of the wave function of the H2 plus molecule can give us a hint. As can be seen in the figure, the black line represents the wave function of the H2 plus molecule, and that resembles more or less the sum of two 1s functions centered on each atom. So we could try to take uh, to express molecular orbitals as a linear combination of atomic orbitals. This is called the LCAO method. Is it possible to use the solution for the, to the hydrogen, hydrogen atom to express atomic orbitals of any other atom? Well, no, because they are, many, they are different in many respects. For example, they can have a different charge to volume ratio, they can have uh, relativistic effects that have to be considered, and many other reasons. Moreover, the solutions to a hydrogen atom are too complicated to function to be handled uh, efficiently. On the other hand, we could express each atomic orbital as a linear combination of more simple and known mathematical functions. Then, this way, each orbital is defined by its component orthonormal functions, and this is valid as long as they span the entire orbital space. Then, thus, the set of functions to be employed should be infinite, and uh, the linear combination would be carried among what is they are called basis function. The collection of this basis function for a given atom is then called a basis set. As long as this linear combination is done in an infinite set of functions, the LCAO procedure is, cor is formally correct and thus the usage of a basis set does not represent an approximation. Most obviously, in practice, we cannot use an infinite set of functions. Moreover, a set of functions should be as small as possible to be efficient when performing calculations. So that's where approximations arise. Even if it's an approximation, finite basis set is a good approximation, because in theory we know how to remove it, that is by increasing its size up to infinity, or more practically, as long as the computed energy reach a convergence to a value. Please note that given a, a molecular orbital that is represented with LCAO by k basis functions, the computation of the already the Coulomb integrals scales as k to the fourth power. This shows why it should be uh, used in practice as small as possible basis sets in order to get calculations done efficiently. Also remember that orbitals are required by any ab initio method, both wave function based or DFT. It is absolutely useless to employ the most refined method or level of theory with a poor basis set to save on time and vice versa.